Good morning, everybody. Glad to have you here today. Thank you for joining me again. And uh, if you would, please uh, like, share, comment on the post. And uh, again, now you may think, well, what difference does that make? It really does make uh, a lot of difference. Uh, the various uh, formats that uh, this goes out on, uh, they see that. They, the, their, their algorithms read and say, well, somebody likes that, somebody shared that, somebody else, the more people who like and share it, the more they think may want to like and share it. So it really, really does uh, make a difference in helping to get the word out. So I'd appreciate um, you um, you doing those things. All right, now let's jump in here to uh, Acts chapter uh, 19 and continue to look at uh, the complaint of the silversmiths against the ministry uh, of Paul. Uh, verse 27 says, There is danger not only that this trade of ours may come into disrepute, but also that the temple of the great goddess Artemis, or Diana, uh, may be counted as nothing, and that she may even be disposed from her magnificence, she whom all Asia and the world worship. When they heard this, they were enraged and were crying out, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. So the city was filled with the confusion, and they rushed together into the theater dragging with them Gaius and Aristarchus, uh, Macedonians who were Paul's companion uh, in travel. So the silversmiths have now uh, succeeded uh, in riling up the community uh, against Paul and the other Christians. And uh, I would submit to you that the real problem uh, is the opening words of verse 27. Uh, danger that this trade of ours may come into disrepute. In other words, uh, people getting at, quit it, stopping worshiping uh, Diana uh, was affecting their pocketbook. I don't think they were too concerned about the temple uh, of Diana being counted as nothing or her being deposed from her magnificence. Their concern was their wallet. And I don't think um, most of you have any problem understanding uh, and believing uh, that uh, opinion uh, of the silversmiths. But they make some accusations here against Paul um, that he was trying to destroy business, uh, that he was trying to put the silversmiths out of business. Uh, Paul wasn't trying to put the silversmiths out of business. He may have been trying to change their business, uh, or they weren't making goddesses anymore, but he didn't have a problem with uh, silversmiths. Uh, they were accusing him of trying to, again, get rid of one of the main businesses in uh, Ephesus, which was the silversmith business and the business around the temple uh, of Diana that was going on and basically then destroying their, their tourism business, uh, that uh, the people who came to Ephesus to see uh, the temple. And again, um, you know, when you think about that, that's the way a lot of businesses uh, throughout time have responded to Christianity, whether it be uh, pornography or drugs or gambling or the lottery, you know, all, all kinds of businesses uh, have uh, saw Christianity um, as a threat to their livelihood. I don't think uh, a lot of the people who are in, in those forms of business, they, I don't think they care less if we preach Jesus. Um, I think that phases them in the least. Uh, but what does phase them is when people come to know Christ and quit doing business with them and it gets into their billfold. Um, then they get upset. Uh, that's what uh, riles uh, people up. And so these people literally stir up the whole city. Uh, and they couldn't catch Paul, but to catch two uh, of his, uh, his friends. And they dragged them into the theater. And it says they were, uh, the city was filled with confusion or filled with rage. Verse uh, 28 again says they were enraged. Uh, they, were, they were full of uh, anger. And again, um, Christianity does not, has not, uh, should not uh, preach world revolution. Um, we, we, you know, uh, we preach spiritual revolution and then let the chips fall where they may. Um, you know, that, that's, that should be our method. Um, if we go out, and, and again, I'm not condoning, say, say gambling. I'll just pick one. Um, but if, if we go out and we just attack gambling, 
well, the problem with that is if we get people to stop gambling, uh, some of you who perhaps smoked or know someone who smoked know that oftentimes when somebody quits smoking, what happens? They start eating and they gain a bunch of weight. If we rail against gambling um, and, and all the gambling goes away tomorrow, um, do you think that will end um, sin and immorality? No, it'll just move from gambling uh, maybe to prostitution. Well, then if we somehow manage to stamp out prostitution uh, and it goes to pornography, and we manage to stamp out pornography, it'll go to alcohol. Um, you know, if we just preach world revolution, um, what we have to preach is spiritual revolution, change of heart um, that, that, that causes a man to lay down uh, those things, um, that causes a man uh, to change. Uh, that is, uh, Paul writes later in the New Testament, that the old things uh, become new, that the things we used to love, now we hate, the things we used to hate, uh, now we love. And so the complaint the Ephesians had here was, was wrong. Paul wasn't trying to destroy the silversmith business. Um, he would have been perfectly content with the silversmith starting to make crosses, um, uh, making necklaces or bracelets or, you know, tea pitchers or whatever. Uh, Paul wasn't trying to destroy the silversmith business. He was trying to bring about uh, a, a spiritual transformation uh, among the people. Now, uh, obviously, if they began to come to know Christ, then probably the temple worship, or what, the Diana's temple worship and that kind of stuff was going to go away. Uh, but they were going to be worshiping the true God then. And, and so, again, the, the difference uh, that, that we, and, and we have to be careful as believers uh, to know that difference. It's not our job just to, to, to preach world revolution. Yeah, we should be upset about the sin of this world. Don't, don't misunderstand where, don't, don't get me on the wrong side of the fence here. Uh, but again, if all we do is rail against the ills of this world um, and, and start getting them changed one by one, people will just move. It'll be like the, the whack-a-mole game at the fair where one mole pops his head up, you hit him, another one pops up, you hit him, another one. If we just try to, to get people to stop doing what they're doing, they'll start doing something else. But if we get them to fall in love with Jesus and allow Jesus to change them, and allow the Spirit to come into their life, uh, then we'll see uh, transformation. And we need to be sure that that um, is the path that we're traveling. Uh, not world revolution, spiritual revolution. World revo Let's put it this way. World revolution will never lead to spiritual revolution, but spiritual revolution will lead to world revolution, family revolution, home revolution, job revolution, uh, community revolution. Um, it'll make a completely new world uh, when we introduce people to Jesus Christ. Think about it. We'll see you here tomorrow morning.